we want to praise our God and thank him for the worship, for the program uh, since uh, morning to this time. I take this opportunity to greet you. The Lord is good. The Lord is good. And all the time, indeed our God is good. We praise him for all the blessings we have experienced this morning uh, to this moment. There are many good things we can talk about this church. From the morning, there was Sabbath school. There was the health talk. There was uh, uh, the announcement. Uh, there was the children's story. There was the choir of the runner friends, under which I think uh, uh, if we have any challenge in court, I think it would be very difficult for us to lose, uh, to lose that case, uh, so long as uh, they work as a team. So it is great, it's a blessing. And being the religious liberty Sabbath, and also there has been the ordination, uh, the choir sang, and I can see some are still lining up. So there are many good things that we can do uh, as we thank God. So God bless you for having such good and wonderful programs that are there for the honor and the glory of our God. Uh, in our opening song, the congregational song, it had beautiful words. But then, I captured three most important statements, which said, I'll go where you want me to go. I will say what you want me to say. And I'll be what you want me to be. And our title for today's sermon is, I will go running on the footmarks. I will go running on the footmarks. You know, from the year 2021 through 2025, you will always be hearing, I'll go, I'll go. And that's why we have it here uh, on the pulpit, on the wall, because that is our theme for uh, five years. But then in every year, we will be having a theme, a sub-theme. Like this year, we are having a, a something called, I'll go to preach the three angels' messages. Or, I'll go and preach the three angels' messages. Therefore, my title is, I'll go running on the footmarks. You know, running, especially on, on a competition, it is something that many people have and like and watch and participate. And when you are doing the running, it has got some rules. Uh, there are some a uh, way of doing it without being disqualified. Uh, you must have a starting point and also you must have a, an, a, a finishing point. You must run within the lanes prescribed or else you'll be disqualified unless you are told after some lamps, that's when you will be able now to join. You must be able to compete. But there are times when you are competing with people, people have come with a, a, another method of doing it that they cannot even compete themselves, like Kipchoge, who can compete with, with themselves and with time to see if he can break a record without facing a competition of any other individual. That is the dy dynamics of uh, uh, the competition. So that race must be run within the rules that are set in place, and the speed that is required, and the time that is needed, and the place that is supposed to be done. And all the people who are there must be able to observe those rules and guidelines. So it's the same to the gospel ministry. The servants of the Lord likens our spiritual journey, especially when we take into consideration time, time is of essence, that we must run without wasting any time. They equate it to a race that you are racing against uh, the other Lord blocks that can be put uh, in place uh, by uh, uh, the one who works against the, uh, the, the gospel of God so that we can be, come out and fix us. And we must cross the line successfully that we may be able to be counted as people who must have run this race 
uh, successfully. Therefore, that is our, our, our theme for this time. I want to invite you for the few minutes that we shall be able to spend that we can be able to hear what the Lord uh, wants us to hear. Let us pray. Father, we are in your presence this afternoon. We want to listen to you talk to us. Please do it as you have done always. My prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, we read uh, from our key text. That is Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. And this is what we read. Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Looking unto Jesus, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, Go for the joy that was set before him, endured the cross, despised the shame, and I sat, and I sat down at the and I sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. So the first question comes: Why were these words written the way they are written? Therefore also has, therefore also has, since we are surrounded by such a great crowd of witnesses. Therefore, also has. Why were this was written this way? It's like they are concluding something. It's like they are summarizing that which has been on the, on the discussion. I want us to open the book of Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11. Just open that, by, by, that, that chapter and don't cross until I move from there. Uh, I wanted to put it in a summary this way. That chapter is talking about the heroes of faith, the men and the women whom God counted as uh, being faithful uh, to their calling. Uh, when you go to verse 4, the Bible says, by, by faith, Apple offered uh, to God an excellent acceptable sacrifice by faith. When you go to verse, verse 5, the Bible says, by faith, Enoch walked with God and blessed God and was taken to God to heaven. He was translated. He never saw uh, death by faith. When you go to verse 7, the Bible says, By faith, Noah built the ark and saved his family from being swept by the flood. And when you go to verse 8, the Bible says, By faith, Abraham, Obeyed God, and therefore it was, it was counted to him as righteous. But Abraham went beyond obeying God. He went to the extent of even sacrificing his own son. The son whom he had been given out of a resurrection. Because Abraham was considered as good as death. And Sarah was considered as good as dead or as weak. They had gone beyond the reproductive age. So for them to have a son, Abraham said, this one has come to me from somebody else who was like dead. And therefore, the child has been brought to me uh, 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 like a person who has been brought from, uh, uh, from, 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 from the grave. And therefore, for that reason, apart from uh, the faith that we say Abraham had faith, and therefore that's why he gave his son out of faith, but it went beyond there. Because Abraham said, if God is able to resurrect me physically and be able to become protective and I can get a child and this one I had considered myself as good as death and therefore now I can have a child, then that is a God who does resurrection. And they said, I believe even if I kill my son as a sacrifice, God would resurrect him. Based on that one, ah, he said, yes, I can't wait anymore. I must give out my son. And therefore, by faith, he obeyed God. When you go, uh, when you go to verse, uh, verse uh, 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 the next, the next verse, those verses which you follow, by faith, Moses was hidden in a basket for three months. By faith, he refused to be called the son uh, of, the, of, of Pharaoh's daughter. By faith, 
He forsook Egypt and chose to be with God, with God's people. And by faith, he, pers he persuaded the Passover. And by faith, he crossed the Red Sea, which was real red because of uh, how threatening it was. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell, and the Israelites went in to occupy. That's in verse 13. In the verse 31, by faith, that hopeless, in terms of faith, that hopeless Arab woman called Rahab was, did not perish because of helping God's people. And then the Bible says, what can I say? With men like Gideon, Barak, Samson, Chephthah, huh, Dan, uh, David, uh, Samuel, and the men of the prophets, what can I say about these men? By faith, they subdued or conquered kingdoms. By faith, they did righteous things. By faith, they obtained promises. By faith, they stopped the mouths of lions. By faith, they quenched the flames or the violence of fire. And by faith, uh, they escaped the sword and obtained uh, killed by the sword. And by faith, these men were used to raise the dead children and handed over to the hands of many women. So in short, these people are called the heroes of faith. And they did many things, so by faith by faith. But again, that was the positive side of it. On the negative side of it, they say these men, as much as they are called the heroes of faith, these men were mocked. It, they, it was, their faith was not without the price. It, it, they paid heavily because of their faith. So they say, the Bible says they were mocked. They were tortured. They were scorched. They were jailed. They were imprisoned. They were stoned. They were sown with souls. They were uh, slain with swords. They were, they, they were made to wonder they didn't have good clothes the way we are wearing clothes this, uh, this, this time. They wandered about in silk skins and also gold skins. Those were their, 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 their clothes at that time. These men, in short, were afflicted. They were tormented. They wandered in deserts because they were being chased from their homes. They were wanted. People uh, were, were really uh, looking uh, to, to destroy their life and uh, finish them. They were wandering in the mountains. They were wandering in caves. They were living in those caves and those dens. So that's how it is. But when you go to verse 39 and 40, verse 39 and 40 captures something that was very uh, uh, significant. That is very important for us. They say these men and the women even testified of them as being faithful. It was that a testimony was given that these men are faithful. That's one thing that was spoken of these men. Then number two, which was spoken of these men, those verses, because you have your Bible, you can see there. Number two, which was spoken of these men and women of God. That these people, having been testified that they were faithful, they were given a promise. But that promise was never fulfilled in their times. Some of them kept on hoping, kept on looking, kept on looking forward, kept on hoping that things would come, that the suffering and the challenges would come to an end. Some even slept, yet still hoping, even under persecution, and very painful situations. They never received the promise. When I read here, I see God postponing, uh, fulfilling their promise. But for what reason? The Bible says, God in his own goodness, which they also appreciated, he said, it will not serve them a purpose for them to be in heaven, minus the rest of the generations which were to believe later. That's you and me. So they said it could not fit, it could not benefit them anything. If they, if God closed the door of probation at that time, and they said yes, uh, if he could have said it is, it is from Apple, the rest could not be born. If he said he had, he could stop at Abraham, the rest could not be born. If he said he could stop at Samuel, the rest of us could not be there. In fact, even if he said he could stop at Aaron G. White, some of us could not be there because that was many years back. And therefore, God said, yes, I, I can testify you that you are a man of faith, you are a woman of faith, the, and, and you have walked faithfully the, according to the word of God, yes. But then he says, 
Let me postpone fulfilling the promise, the promise of giving you eternal life, the promise of taking you to heaven, the promise of bringing the world to an end, so that many sons and daughters of your brethren who are supposed also to inherit the kingdom of heaven, they can have a chance and an opportunity. They are witness too. They are told this good news and they believe and trust and together you can now enter into heaven and enjoy the, uh, the, bla the place of salvation. So out of us, God postponed fulfilling uh, that one. And when you go to verse 13 of that chapter, 13, 14, 15, the Bible says they had an opportunity to choose and they go back to where they came from, from their own world before they believed. But when they saw from far that beautiful land, that eternal life, that salvation and redemption of the saints, they embraced it and they said, this one, we cannot look to the west or the east, the south or the north. We must stay on course. How long it will take, it doesn't matter. Provided we reach there and when all is done, we know final things will be good for us. And now, when all these things have been written, now here comes Paul again to chapter 12. And he says, there are four. There are four. We hold so. Since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses. Ah, what are this? He says, there are four. Since we can have a motivation. Since we can be able to be encouraged. Since you can be able to get hope from the uh, work and the work of this man. Since you can watch Heber. Since you can watch Noah. We can watch Abraham. We can watch Moses. We can watch David. We can watch Ahab, Rahab. Since all these people with what they did. And it is written for us to be able to encourage us. And to remind us and to strengthen us. We have enough evidence. And that evidence is surrounding us. Turn to the east. The evidence is there. Down to the west, the evidence is there. Go to the north, a lot of evidence. Go to the south, anywhere you turn to, we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses which must motivate us to move forward. That is what the Bible says. So the Bible says, we are surrounded by a great crowd of witnesses. In fact, if the Bible could have been written, all the names of the brothers could have been mentioned there. And later on, all the names of the apostles could have been mentioned there. And later on, all the names of the believers. And if the Bible was being expanded, expanded and added, you know, even the names of the people that we have known as great preachers and great heralds of the kingdom, of the message of the kingdom of God, these men and women could have been written here. And who knows, maybe you, one of you, your names could have been written in these. And therefore you become an evidence of another person who is believing. And if he was to be given this someone in a fresh way, then he could be told, since you are surrounded by such a great crowd of witnesses, of all the believers who are seated around you this morning or this afternoon at the New Life SDA Church, you have no reason to give up. You must continue in this race until you win the way they have won. So the Bible says, because of that one, he says, you people, don't measure on anything that can hinder your journey. He says, can you put aside every weight? You know, those who have watched wrestling, and you can see people fighting, sometimes the weight of somebody, the volume of somebody, mothers, people who are huge, they have an advantage. So, some who does, who lift, some weight lifting, uh, the heavier you are, then the easier you can do it. Someone, those who, who throw the, 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 dis, the discus or the, 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 the short boot, you know, those people who are a bit heavier, they can be able to push those, those uh, stones and be able to score. So he says, so human beings can also be, uh, can be heavyweights. If there is anything that I and you are entertaining and are cherishing so much that you cannot bat with, that one is making me an heavyweight in terms of spirituality. 
I cannot perceive Christ, uh, spiritual things the way they are supposed to be perceived. I cannot be able uh, uh, to do the way God wants me to do. I cannot walk. I cannot pray. I cannot serve. I cannot be able to dedicate myself uh, 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 adequately as the Lord wants me to do. Therefore, he says, if there is anything that is overweighing you down, that is becoming a stumbling block, that is making you an unnecessary heavy weight, Lay aside that weight, keep on working, keep on working. And finally, the journey will come to its completion. And he says, such a kind of weight becomes a sin. And that sin, the only thing it can do to you is to become a stumbling block in your Christian walk. This, it will become a, it will entangle you, become an ensnare. It can make you not progress. But he says instead, can you run with the race with endurance? Run the race with endurance. Because they said the race is set before you. And he says, as you run, don't lose the focus. The focus is who? Jesus. Because he is the author and the finisher of our faith. You know, we know authors always write books. They write things that people can be able to read. But here, uh, we are getting another meaning. That our faith must start in Jesus, and it must progress in Jesus, and it must, my, my, and it must end successfully in Jesus. So Jesus becomes the author and the finisher of our faith. You cannot succeed without Jesus, and you cannot start without Jesus. You cannot progress without Jesus, and you cannot finish successfully at the crossing line without Jesus. So Jesus in us, he will enable us to start our journey, our Christian walk, our salvation must start in Jesus. So he says that race is set before you, man. He says run with endurance. In other words, it's not going to be an easy race. You must endure because challenges are there in this race. Adults are on the way. People will, will interfere. We want, we want to divert you from that race. The devil will come in, but run with endurance because the men have run and it has been testified of them as now having done righteous before God. Then he says, don't look to anything else. Look unto Jesus. Keep on moving. Keep on moving. Look unto Jesus. He has become your author. He has become your progressor. And finally, he will become your finisher in the race which you have started. You know what? The Bible says, Jesus, Jesus despised the shame. I don't know if you have ever thought about the, how Jesus despised the shame. You know, for a man of his credibility, who was now considered above the rest of the learned men at that time, be somebody who could be able to reason things beyond the common people who were around, even the most learned. Somebody who can do miracles, who can heal people, who can resurrect people, who can pray and the food can be multiplied. Somebody who can say things. Somebody who can walk in the midst of men and they cannot see him. And later on, the same person who is crucified on the cross. And he is crucified with the criminals, with thieves, red and light. And that's not enough. Somebody now who is wearing the crown of shame for, 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 for vendors. And somebody who is being uh, crucified naked. And uh, you know naked, people may not have the problem of looking all over. But then there are things, there are areas where normally men and women, you can look and you can see any, anywhere. But those other places, other areas, you cannot watch. You cannot look at. Even you yourself, you want to look, but then you force yourself not to look at. And you know that's what happened. But he's on the cross very naked. But you know what? He knew he was going to be crucified naked and be put to shame and be ashamed and put at that spot. But you know what? He said, shall we all let them do what they want to do? Mine is one. Let me, despite that shame, I don't care about it. Let them do what they want to do. As for me, that's where I will go. That is shame. I will face it if that is what will save human beings. And he went ahead and he accepted the shame and they saved the human beings. So he despised. But why did he despise? 
Because when he could see at the joy that was going to come afterwards, he said that joy combined with the shame. Shame is nothing. My brother, my sister, at times there are many other things that we compare with our salvation. Sometimes as human beings we give in things which are temporal, things which are short-lived, things that cannot progress at all, that cannot take us anywhere. How I pray and I wish that, Lord, you may, God may be able to help us, that we may make a decision and a choice when we see the joy of salvation that is waiting for us. We count all other things as nothing, but only progress towards that joy because that is where our eternity is centered. And then in the end, this way, when Jesus is running this race, Jesus ran and finished. Yes, he came to this world. He lived this world. He was tempted. He was rejected. All the way to the cross. Then down to the grave. Then he resurrected. Now, the author says, good news, that like Jesus, yes, he emerged victorious. And finally was ushered back to heaven and they sat at the right hand of God never to leave that place anymore. So he says, likewise, you men of faith run the same race because you have what, the, what, 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 it, what, what it takes for you to be motivated. You are surrounded by such a great crowd of witnesses. Ah, you know what? I'll go anywhere. Where I go where you want me to go. I'll, I'll say what you want me to say. And I'll become what you want me to become. I am impressed by this man who had found the book of Mark chapter 8. By this man who had found in the book of Mark chapter 8. In the book of Mark chapter 8, In the book of Mark chapter 8, verse 1 through verse 5, Mark chapter, Mark chapter 8, verse 1 through verse 5, uh, let me go quickly because of time. In those days, the multitude uh, being very great and having nothing to eat, Jesus called his disciples to him and said to them, I have compassion on the multitude. Because they have now continued with me three days and have nothing to eat. And if I send them away hungry to their own houses, they will faint on the way, for some of them have come from afar. Then his disciples answered him, How can one satisfy these people with bread here in the wilderness? And they asked, How many loaves do you have? And they answered, how many? Ah, uh, judge, they answered, how many? Seven. Seven. And don't confuse. This, is a, this scene is, a, is a different from when Jesus fed 5,000 men using five, uh, you, no, using, yeah, using five, uh, this one they said seven, using five loaves of, 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 of bread and also two fish. Don't confuse. That was a different uh, scene. This one is seven loaves of bread, and they say a small fish. They didn't know whether it was a man or what. Something they say a small fish, and it's not it's not known by number. And the people here who are fed is four thousand. The other one is five thousand. And if you read throughout the third chapter, you will find Jesus even making an illustration and says, "Last time, how many people did I, did I feed? Five thousand. Right now, how many? Four thousand." And he's asking them, how are you not believing? Anyway, back to this, to, to what I want to say here. You know, when Jesus was preaching, he kept on drawing crowd. People kept on hearing the message. They were so sweet, very touching. They were conflicted in their hearts. When they came to Jesus, they never liked, felt like parting with him. So the message Jesus is saying here, he has been preaching for the last three days. He preached for one day from morning to evening. He kept on moving as he preached from town to town, from village to village. And the message becomes so sweet. And these men and women 
kept on following Jesus. When night came, they were with Jesus. And again, the following day, Jesus woke up and kept on moving and preaching. They never went back to their homes. They kept on following. Then there was the second day. They were also still with Jesus. And the night came. Now the third day, Jesus preached and saw that the day is, is, coming, uh, is, is coming home. Then he, he looked at this man and said, yes, the word is so sweet. The message is so touching. They have accepted. They don't want to battle with me. But you can look from things. Yes, they are rich spiritually. They are fed spiritually. But physically, they have not eaten for the last three days. And they have become so weak. Jesus said, what I have given them, this is enough. They must now go back to their villages and the witness and the bridge. And they became my high witnesses and take the testimony. But they realized there was a problem which has been created. The problem was these people have not eaten for three days. If we sent them away without eating, they would faint on the way because they had not eaten for three. I think they did not even remember that they have not eaten because God, this message becomes so sweet in their own lives. And now Jesus is turning to the apostles and say, time has come for you people to share. And he says, yes, I have compassion. I have sympathy to this crowd. They have loved me. They have loved my message. They have loved salvation. They want to be in the kingdom. But yet they must go back home so that they can preach what they have heard. And the rest, the new converts, I can also have other new converts. But you see, these apostles of Jesus, I equate them with the pastors I equate them with the elders. I equate with them the presidents and madmen directors and the men and the women who are leading the other church in various circles. They are complaining to Jesus. They are asking Jesus, you are telling us to give these people food. And you can see the number is big and great. Where can we get enough food to feed these people you have corrected? You know, sometimes people are asked to Jesus. They are accusing Jesus of making their life difficult, that Jesus has been with them. They have sacrificed their, uh, the, the, the things from their families. They have left their families. They are following Jesus. And Jesus is also having challenges with their lives. He's telling them, even the food you have got, the smaller you have, still you can part and defeat these people. And they are coming head on to Jesus. And they are telling him, you don't you remember we are in the desert, where there is no even water and the food is not grown here. And you are aware. And you want us to feed these people. We feed the, the multitude that you have brought. And you say, tell us to give them our food. How can we? That one can happen. And Jesus is just asking them, but what do you have, you men? They say nothing but only seven loaves of bread. And down there they say just a few of, the, of fish, a few. They don't want even to mention the number to make Jesus, Jesus know that actually they don't have food. Anyway, the rest of the story, how they were fed, you can follow it. But let me tell you, I admire Jesus. And that's why I want to speak to our church, to you men and women this afternoon. May the Lord bless you and give you a vision and methods and approaches that you can use so that you can multiply the congregation of a new life. And from there, we shall be assured that you have our done, we have done our part. Our brothers and sisters have come on board. We are now headed to heaven. May the Lord give you those visions. And when you see the church is filled, if you happen to come late, don't complain to the elders that they are now serious preachers. Don't complain to the pastors. Don't complain and say what is happening with our church today. You go there at the nine and the judge is filled to capacity. I have nowhere to sleep. I don't like this one. Ah, you should say glory and honor be to God because he has brought in many souls. So the, the apostles were not happy that Jesus is getting more souls and that is the core business of the church and that is what we are called upon to do in the year 2022. You know what? Jesus was compassion to the crowd. He was sympathetic. There is nothing more than that you can do for Jesus apart from being sympathetic to the sinners, to the non-believers, people who have not known Jesus. If you can sympathize that one, you could have done Jesus a great service and prepared many and a way so that many can be reached. Yes, when you give your life faith free, 
When you give your offering faith free, when you offer your services faith free, when you are available for in doing the mission work, that is being sympathetic to Jesus, and by extension, you are sympathizing his sons and daughters who are awaited to be part and parcel of the kingdom of salvation. Yes, I am, I am impressed by these new converts. They left their homes. They left their, their families. They left their spouses. They left their parents and their children. They left all that they had. They left their cows, their lives, or their damned animals. They left their food and they left everything. For day one, they never went back. For day two, they never went back. For day three, they never went back, my brother and my sister. And they were still going on. Why not for Jesus who said, you have come very far. I want you to go. Ah. Jesus became a priority in their life. May Jesus become a priority in, their life, in our life, no matter what, so that we can be able to give Jesus a chance in our life. So Jesus said, these men and women have come far with me. So I have this question I'm posing to you. How far have you come with God? How far have you come with Jesus? Are you walking side by side? Are you walking step by step? Is Jesus walking about and walking about, yet you say we are walking together? How far have you come with God? How far have you come with Jesus? But Jesus was careful. He said, the devil is waiting so that he can accuse us that this Jesus who can correct men and the women and the God to bridge them. He does not now give them food. And you, they can say, God, outside there and see. Because if they are weak, they can fail on the way, they can faint on the way. And now the devil will come in and say, you can see Jesus who takes people and then he leaves them hungry and now he's killing them. So Jesus says, we cannot send these people away. Let us be sympathetic. Many times I admire how we Adventists, the way we welcome our guests and our visitors, men who have come for the first time. We have those beautiful words which we normally feed men them feel at home. But when it comes to lunch or and other uh, places where you want to eat and enjoy, we go to our safety corners and sometimes nobody remembers where are those people we welcome to, where are they? Let me say this, my, my, my dear brother, my sister. God is caring. God will always provide for you physically. And then he will, also, he will provide for you spiritually. Jesus is, is providing for these uh, people first spiritually and then physically. Men of God need, and women of God need physical supplies. They need spiritual supplies. They need to be fed. To be fed. Yes, time is gone. Uh, of course, we need to come back to, for the afternoon program. Let me jump other things and say two things, and I finish in five times, in five minutes' time. Number one, in Revelation chapter 14, verse 6 through verse 14, it is called the three angels' messages. And the year 2022, our theme is we are called to preach the three angels' messages. If you read chapter uh, 14, verse 6 and 7, the Bible says that then I saw another angel flying in mid-heaven with an everlasting gospel to preach all those people who dwell or who stay on the earth. And they cried with a loud voice and said, Fear God and give him glory. Worship him who made the heaven and the earth and all things you can count it. there. Because, and then he says, we are in the, in the judgment hour. Let me say this. As we preach the three angels' messages, remember the message for all people who live on, on earth. Remember the message must be taken with speed because time is no more. Remember it is called the everlasting gospel. The three angels' messages is the everlasting gospel. The everlasting gospel means what? Jesus was, was one time in heaven. He left the heaven to come and save man. 
He was incarnated, he was born and he became man on earth. He was born and he grew up. Yes, time came, he started to minister. He was baptized. He was went, he, he went, he, he, he went for, he was tempted. He was rejected. He was finally crucified. Yes, the same Jesus. He, he accomplished our salvation on the cross. And he went to the grave, but also he resurrected as victorious ones. He went to heaven. He is preparing a mansion for, for us, rooms for us. But the same Jesus, who is preparing rooms for us, he is uh, overseeing the judgment seen in heaven. Names are being brought at, uh, out of the book of life and names are being retained. Cases are being mentioned. I don't know whether your case has been reached or what time it will be, it will be reached. How short, how long it is from this hour. I don't know. But we are in the, in the judgment hour. Verdict is being rendered on various names. The entire cross of probation will come and it will be very soon. They say now because of that one, men should be careful how they live. Women should be careful how they live. But one thing that you don't, you don't know, the three angels' messages is coming to the climax. In, in that message, in that message, it says, in that message, it says, Yes, he created the heaven and the earth. That means if there is any other time that you, have, you and me should serve our God with what he has allowed us and he has blessed us with, starting with ourselves, it is now absolutely beautiful. So he created. But then on the sixth day, he created the family. He inaugurated the marriage. Men should be faithful to their families. Women should be faithfully humble to their families. Children should respect their parents. Yes, parents should love their children. Jew, young men and young women must do things in the right way and honor their God. That's what is being called here. It's part of the three angels' messages. And finally, it says on the Sabbath he rested. If there is any other time that you should take the message of the Sabbath seriously, it is this time. If there is any other time, that you must go back to the drawing board and ask yourself, am I keeping the Sabbath the way the Lord wanted? Can I remind you, in the book of Great Hope or Desire of Ages, it says the entire world will come together and agree many things. But only two things, only two things, that it would be the separating wall between those who worship God in truth and those ones who just worship God casually. And those are spiritualism. Those people who believe that the dead can communicate with the living, other than other makumbush and other things, they should come to that stop. But then the last one, he says, the, uh, the observance of the Sabbath. My brother and my sister, let me tell you that coming to church to worship, we must come and worship God on Sabbath. We come and sing for him. We come and study his word. We break the bread together, the Holy Communion. We must come to God and give our faithful faith and our faithful offering. We come and listen to this one. We come to study in this class and then go out for mission and reach the unreached so that our brethren can be able to do that one. That one. You know what? I love Jonathan. I love Jonathan. You know what? I love Jonathan. I love Jonathan. I love Jonathan. I love Jonathan. Time came. As I want to make this call. Time came. As I want to make this call. Time came. Time came. When there were no weapons in Israel. They had taken the weapons to the Philistine land. But then the Philistines had overpowered the Israelites. Men went to eat in caves, in dens, in rocks, in thickets. And Jonathan, the son of Saul, asked himself, How long shall we be slaves to these Philistines? But he says, How can we attack them? We have no weapons. So we had only weapons with Jonathan and his father Saul. No any, any man had a weapon in Israel. But Jordan said, with the permission of my father, or not, I'll go and attack the Philistines, and God will help me to defeat them. 
the home bearer, the, the person who is a, is a, is, is, is a sister and said, but how can that one happen? But I love Jonathan. Jonathan, Jonathan said this one. First Samuel chapter 14, verse 6, he said this. The Lord is not restrained to save with the few or with many. The Lord is not restrained. The Lord cannot be prevented to save with the few or with the many. What do we say? Amen. Yes. So if you are one and you want to do God's faithful work, don't look at the number. Go alone and do it. If you are a few, one do it. If you are a many, one do it. We are proud of you to have a church with big numbers in South Nairobi Kajiado Field. When we talk of a big church, we say we have a new life. There are those ones who come closer to you, like Lesahi, Karengata, Ngong Hills. But all of them strong around 1,000. With a population of 3,000 and beyond, you have the capacity to do all this work. As a team go, as many go, God is not restrained to save with the many or with the few. I go running on the food marks. If I look at heaven, if I look at Moses, if I look at Enoch, if I look at Noah, if I look at Samuel, if I look at the men, all of them, my brother, my sister, let me tell you, I'll not give up, I'll move, I'll move and proceed until victory will be realized. And that is my prayer, that I'll not give up. I'll work on the footmarks, the footmarks of the heroes of faith, the footmarks of Jesus, the footmarks of the apostles, the footmarks of the believers. Be to our God, because he has done it through us. And that is my prayer in Jesus' name. How many join me and say, yes, God, let us walk on the footmarks, and when time is no more, we shall say we have walked like our brothers and now we shall be partakers of eternal kingdom. Let me see those ones who want to join me in that prayer. May we stand up. May we stand up and sing the song and then we pray. Shall we pray our Father and our God? You have surrounded us with enough evidence, witnesses. Those ones whom we have read this afternoon, those ones who have not been mentioned among this list, but the evidence is overwhelming in the run of this race of salvation. Jesus himself has done it. The men and the women in whose hands he left, he commissioned the work of the gospel. They have done it and we can see the evidence. We want to ask that Lord you may be able to help us not only to walk, but run on this footmark, on this race, that you can be able to reach many souls before time runs out. Together we may be prepared for your second coming, because the world is no more, is coming to an end. May we feed on your word and also on this physical fitness, as Jesus did with the disciples and the rest of those who believed. May we now embrace the three angels' messages, proclamation, and be part of the partake and lady from the front by doing that which you want us to do, by saying that which you want us to say, and even becoming what you want us to become so that you can win many. They can join your train and walk together, even run together to their destination, that is the heavenly kingdom. Because you have told us you, you are not restrained you can, to save by many or by few, we request you honestly that you can save through the few who can give themselves. You can also save through the many who have given themselves. Let us run the, the race without giving up as we proclaim this message. Thank you because your people are listening. They have heard you speak. And Lord, let it not be the voice of a human being. Let it be your voice which you have said. And let it be the command which you have commanded. Is the one that's going to cut the day and have a place in our hands. And finally, when that one is accomplished in this year, I'll go and preach the three angels' messages. Many could have believed. And all of us could have said, yes, you have done it. 
and us is to wait for you to usher us into eternal kingdom. Dismiss us with your blessings from your presence and remember us as we walk from now henceforth. It is our humble prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs>